All right. Welcome to another episode of uh, Talking Cloud. How are you today? Hello. Good. Good. All set How are you for doing? the weekend? I'm good. Absolutely. Good. The sun's shining today, which is like the first time it in is. almost a week. Right? You'd think we were on the West Coast instead of the East Coast, the way the weather's been. No kidding. Yeah. Not been good. Been good. So do you have any plans for the weekend? Any uh, Anything on the watch list? Um... Let's I'm putting see. you on the spot. You are putting me on the spot yeah. here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just popped into yeah. my head. Usually Friday is is movie recommendation day. That is true. That is yeah. true. We've been getting a. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, there's a movie oh. called Prospect. I wanted to watch actually. Prospect. That's with, um, what's his name from uh, the Nicolas Cage movie? Oh. Pedro Pascal. Oh, okay. Awesome. Speaking of Nicolas Cage movies, uh, I'm waiting for the latest one where I can't remember the name of it. I'm waiting for it to come out on like a streaming service of some sort or whatever, uh, where he, is it something about his dreams start coming? Oh, we watched that. Is it it worth my time? I think so. It's a very strange movie. It's called Dream Scenario. Dream Uh, Scenario. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think that's kind of the theme of all of his movies lately is they're they're yeah. interesting uh, stories, <laughs> so I'll wait for it to come out, and uh, we'll we'll watch it. All right, let's flip over here to the articles that we've come across this week. Have you mm. ever seen the Datadog Security Labs website before? Have you ever stumbled across this before? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I, you know what? I, I kind of, an article comes up in a feed somewhere or whatever, and I, I go and I read it, and it always reminds me this is a great resource. Like there's lots of really good stuff here. Oh yeah. Yeah. I've noticed a couple times I, I've really enjoyed it. So this article came up last week and, uh, you know, ECS is the new EC2 for crypto mining. Okay. That's great. But you know, it's a good read. I really in- enjoyed looking through this, but what I thought, and, and I've, I've looked at a couple other security related articles from them and what I really enjoy about this is they're highlighting cloud trail events and sort of like yeah. taking the perspective of why would somebody, you know, who's maybe acting not in your best interest, why might they, why might you be seeing these API calls in your, in your cloud trail event log? So I really enjoyed this. I think this is, you could use this to generate alerts off of and things like that. If you, if you wanted to understand what's happening a, a little more in your accounts. Yeah. It's a good forensic look at, kind of how these bad actors behave in your cloud environments. So well worth looking at for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And then there was something else that popped out at me here that I thought was interesting. Yeah. Here's kind of the same thing. Maybe it was just this other table. So up here, we're looking at sort of first activity observed, what were they doing? And then down here, sort of enumeration and uh, you know getting data out of the environments what were they doing trying yep, to run one. ec2 instances so all these things are really great for kind of helping you understand what's happening in your account mm-hmm. yeah and this one here is is my got to be my favorite how many times have we reviewed an aws account and 95 percent of all the security groups have a room oh, that looks like this in it they had a big problem with this a few years ago i think we're People were hacking into publicly accessible EC2 instances and mining on them. Yeah. 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 So brutal. The one thing I think you could, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just saying that's a big vector, right? Yeah. I think the the one thing you could do if if you wanted to improve the security of your account, I I don't want to say easily because if you have these types of rules, most likely somebody is using them, but getting that list of all of the security groups that have open access on a port. Right now, AD yeah. 443 might might be okay, depending on the destination of that traffic. But just getting that report to show you what's open uh, p- could probably give you some good insight into what's been configured in your account and maybe identify some things that you could probably plug up pretty quickly. Right? For sure. That should be high on your to-do list. So I, I really like this uh, this article. I thought it was it was really insightful. And even the the li- little mind maps that they drew to kind of help yeah. you visualize it, like really good, good article. Visual. Yeah, yeah really yeah. good article. So that's the first one on my list today, right? Thought it was neat. Um, the next thing, uh, I'm going to come back to, no, let's talk about local zone. So local zones, uh, obviously 
for specific use cases really good. And the fact that, you know, I, I guess the way I always think about this is basically reducing the latency associated with the services that you're delivering and getting closer to your customers. So moving from sort of what I'll call regional or AZ computing to running your resources in a local zone. Uh, yeah. Interesting that I, I think there was another announcement maybe a week or two ago about some additional local zones. So Amazon continues to build out this global infrastructure. Yeah. Yeah. They're expanding their data centers. I thought this was particularly interesting if you happen to be in Chicago. I know there's a big stock exchange situation there with futures trading, I think. Okay. Um, so if you're in that business, you might be interested. But yeah, if you need any kind of lower latency, then this is the kind of thing you would be looking for. Yeah. And this here, you know, again, if you're kind of wondering what type of workloads might warrant this type of lower latency, I do like this. Amazon often will give you sort of some sample use cases to at least start thinking about it, right? But I like your idea yeah. too of, of, you know, just uh, that in the finance space, obviously those latency is, is going to be super important, right? Yeah. I know there's a lot of big video game servers in Chicago as well. Oh, okay. Um, I know Ride Games has a server there. Yeah. There's a few others too, I'm pretty sure. So, okay. yeah. Well, that that's, uh, you know, that's Probably. where I run all my big video game servers, like Right, yeah. The the in ultra Chicago. popular Minecraft server and stuff. I'll put it in the local zone there because I need ultra low <laughs> latency. So I, yeah. Uh, you got to get the low latency Minecraft. Yeah, I I don't uh, I don't get exploded by uh, a creeper. <laughs> Actually, most times I die to my nephew hurling something at me while I'm not that, watching. Uh, that's that's about right. my, my most common death scenario in Minecraft. So, yeah, this is this is good, right? <laughs> low latency is good. Yeah, it's got to protect yourself. Uh, here's a good one. Uh, come on, Zoom. There we go. Let's try to get that in a re certification retirements and launches. Hmm. So uh, Amazon is retiring the certified data analytics specialty, the okay. certified database specialty, and the SAP wow. on AWS specialty. Okay. Uh, I thought this was funny. There's there's a lot of controversy about this. People are kind of losing their shit a little oh, really? bit about this. Yeah, it's uh, if if you if you kind of hang around in the the certification and training circles, or you, you've got a few people on your Twitter list or something like that. I I guess your X list now, which sounds weird. Yeah. Um. Yeah, people are kind of kind of upset about this. Was my take on it. Um. I'm I'm happy to see the SAP on AWS specialty go. Uh, because to be honest, it kicked my ass twice and I was like, <laughs> yeah, okay. I know what I'm beaten. I'm going to go and spend some time on some other stuff. Um, yeah. and the other thing, selfishly, I think when these go away, yeah. I can say that I have all the certs. You have them all? <laughs> no, I get all the certs by default. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah. The, SA yeah. the SAP one was the last one on my list if I wanted to have all the certs and um yeah when it kicked my butt twice I, I kind of was like do i you know what do i really even care um i'm gonna go and do something else with my time that's maybe not a great attitude but that was <laughs> the way i approached it well it's not one that we typically encounter very often right i'm just no. thinking what yeah i guess if those go away the only ones i would be missing are data analytics yeah that's yeah it. yeah and i i, I I've, this year. I've heard that they're bringing another associate level sir okay so guess you know again you know watching people kind of lose their minds a little bit about this the the take on it seems to be that and pure speculation obviously that maybe aws is going away from these kind of specialty mm. certs that are focused on something specific and then yeah. more sort of generalized i don't know who knows i guess the other cert that they uh retired was the echo cert i won't say the other word because i have one on my desk but uh <laughs> i think they retired that one a couple of years ago yeah. now yeah i don't yeah, even know if that ago, did it ever make it out of even make it out of beta uh well i got the first one did you whenever it was yeah but yeah yeah i took a run at the beta and because i you could do the betas for free and I passed the beta and I wasn't sure if it ever made it into sort of version one or not. I think they did one. 
Did they, they do did one, one exam, exam and then yeah. discontinued it. My cynical view on this is just you didn't have enough people taking the exam. So I can imagine the effort that it must take for uh, certification and training folks to keep all these things up to date and stuff. So I'm sure there's some sort of business decision-making process going on behind the scenes too. Just the the effort, the work effort to keep them all up to date. If they're not Probably. as popular as they thought they would be, then based on the data that they get, they just retire and create new stuff. So anyways, you know, if you, if people were saying, well, why would I get it before April when it retires just to say that I had it? Cause people are like, well, it's valid for three years. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't yeah. Know. Hey. So this one caught my eye last week. And just because a lot of people were, um, having fun with it. Uh, let's see. Oh, ha, I shared this with you the other day. I won't zoom in. On oh this yeah. One. Um, I don't know what to say about this. I, uh, I, I found this in uh, a social feed somewhere and, uh, because it's the CEO, I decided to watch it and you know, my take on this, I, I kind of thought I said to you, it sounded like alphabet soup to me. Let's just yep. say as many models as we can, and let's say as many buzzwords as we can. Um, I think I kind of see why they're doing it, but uh, yeah, I can't. I don't know. I don't know. It seems like weird to me. My read on it is that for a lot of these systems, if you want it to do a certain specific task or fill a niche role in your system your business whatever it takes a lot of training and selecting the right model yeah right yeah so going deep on one of them doesn't make as much sense as going kind of broader and allowing people to bring their own so i they're just going for the scattershot approach right let's try yeah. and make everything so, available yeah so if i'm understanding what you're saying is amazon's approach here is let's make sure that we have all the models available because there's going to be a lot of experimentation that folks are going to have to do to find the right yeah. model and if we can provide all of them then the likelihood is that you will you will end up using our platform for this exactly and there's no clear winner yet right so it's all this tech is two years old so yeah. and would there ever be a clear winner i don't think like my limited knowledge of it at this yeah. point, right? Because it's so new. I don't know if there'd ever be a real, like when you say a winner, you're not talking about a platform. You're talking about a model, right? Yeah. 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 I don't really, would there ever be a, mod, a a winner from a model perspective? Because just again, there's endless possible use cases and you might just have one model that performs better in a certain situation than others. You can always tailor a model one a model would be better at a certain use case than another, right? Depending on, it's all about the parameters you train it on, the data, the training set. So, okay, yeah, I think it's worth. I think it's worth a view. Like, it, yeah. it, it, there's some interesting questions asked here. I just, for me, you know, I find it an interesting way to talk about it because I don't know. Again, this is just my perspective, right? Everything is so new, and people are just trying to find their way. And if you throw something at me with, I'll make a stupid number up, 27 different uh, technology terms in it, the right. sense of getting overwhelmed very quickly, to me, I'm just like, okay, great. What what does all this mean? Like, how do I use this in my real life? I, where do you start, right? So Yeah, what's what's useful out of that, right? What's, yeah, that, what's like, actionable? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and and just if you're wondering... Yes, I was Googling greenhouses and obviously my, uh, my, my ad blocking software is not working very well. I, <laughs> oh, you're not seeing see the same screen, screen, but yeah. I, am, I yeah. guess we're seeing, yeah. I'm okay. seeing greenhouse, uh, greenhouse ads, uh, <laughs> for like I ever have space for one of those. But anyways, uh, I liked this one, uh, changing gears, Finch. Hmm. We talked about Finch. I, yeah, like last this year. This was after they acquired Fig, right? Uh, no, this is so. Fig is. Oh, this Fig is, became oh, okay. Code Whisperer CLI. This is the tooling for uh, Docker image management. Right. So I played around with this a little bit on my Mac, and mm -hmm. it's interesting. You know, the integration with ECR super easy. You can use the ECR credential helper. And I had it up and running and was able to build an image and push it off to ECR very quickly. 
I didn't okay. really go any further with it than that. Uh, but at the time when it first came out, it was Windows only, or sorry, uh, Mac OS only. And I just yep. kind of wanted to see what it looked like on my Mac. So I played around with it for a bit and, you know, we've got sort of other ways that we do this. So I, I couldn't think of a practical use case for how I might use this as part of what we do for customers at that point in time. But this just caught my interest because it's now available on Windows as well. So um, a, a lightweight well, command line tool. With seamless credential passing, it seems like. Yeah. So you don't have to set any of that up for uh, like you would have to if with a regular Docker image to access your AWS environment. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's the credential, well. the ECR credential helper, I use that in our GitLab environments and on the runners and stuff. And that thing's a, a lifesaver, right? Without that, you've got to run those ECR login commands and stuff like that. I don't know if it's just the way I think about it. I The install of the credential helper is really, you, you could, I don't think you could make it any easier. And it is, I yeah. do find actually getting the credential helper and it's probably an RTFM situation where I'm skimming the documentation, maybe a little too lightly and just saying, oh, how hard can this be? Um, but I, I do know that with the credential helper for ECR, whether I think you're using Finch or anything else, it is a, a, a huge, huge uh, time saver and just makes it easier, yeah. right? And I don't think it's just you. I've had to walk some customers through that setup before as well. So, yeah, well, using good. credential helper or using using just, credential helper. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I find for me the the toughest part was always just getting um, because I know in the is it uh, it's a JSON file that you edit right, and I know in yeah. there you can just say ECR login or you can put in the the URLs that you get for your ECR repositories yeah. registries. I always forget what they're called, but. Uh, sorting that out and getting it to work uh, for multiple repositories, I found sometimes just made my head hurt a little bit. It's probably more user error than anything, but uh, it's still way it's better finicky. than having to run those ECR login commands, right? Yeah. So that's kind of neat. I think if you're using containers at all, this is definitely a look, uh, definitely yeah. worth a look, whether you're running on Windows or Mac. Um, is it? Is it? I think it's just Windows and Mac right now. Yeah, and it's, yeah, it, it like. supports only Linux containers, uh, Windows, and, and Mac. So there's that. I thought that was kind of neat. And this one, uh, the the these these weekly podcasts or these weekly uh, whatever we call them, they, they <laughs> tend to end up talking about AI a lot. And this yeah. this came out just yesterday. It's Rufus, which is a conversational shopping experience. I was super okay. excited about this. I'm still super excited about this, but I got to uh, I got to paragraph two. Launching today in beta to a small subset of customers in the mobile app uh, will progressively ah. roll out to additional U.S. customers. My first thought was okay. I'm open up the mobile app and I'm gonna I'm gonna af ask Rufus a couple questions and see uh, see what what I get. But this is kind of cool, right? A shopping assistant trained on Amazon's product catalog. Uh, and from information across the web to answer your questions about your shopping needs. Yeah, that's that's kind of where this is going. Yeah, I guess yeah. you can ask it specifically. You can tailor your search a lot easier. Yeah, they give way, you some examples nice. down here of questions you could ask. Uh, where was it here? Wonder how remember. often they'll update it. Yeah, shop feel. by occasion or by a purpose. Um, you know, look learn what to look for while shopping for products. What's the difference between, you know, you can ask it questions if you're confused about a product. I thought it was kind of neat. Yeah. Oh, okay. So they're thinking like if you're, if you want to buy something, but you don't know what you want to buy kind of thing. Yeah. Like check. here, this is a great question. Like I know like some of the times you just can get overwhelmed if you're not sure where to start. So, okay. You want to start an indoor garden. I guess, I guess the thing is you could spend some time in a search engine and read articles yeah. about it. But if you're an Amazon customer and you're going to buy something, then why not just ask right in the, the platform that you're going to use to purchase the product? You would think Amazon kind would have of, a lot of insight, right, into what to suggest. It's kind of like going to the store and asking someone who works there who might be more familiar with the products. Yeah. In, the, in yeah. a sense. Yeah. Except it's not a it's not a person. It's a machine that's trained on the entire set. Of, yeah. Amazon items and 
general internet knowledge, yeah. but I thought it was kind yeah. of neat. So it'll be interesting to see how this rolls out um, over time. And, and you know what, to be honest, I think nowadays uh, we, I was talking to somebody about this the other week, the reviews, and I'm not saying this about Amazon reviews. I'm just saying about reviews in general, increasingly, mm. I think a, there was a time where reviews were helpful. I think most reviews now are probably it's probably yeah they're they're, they're fake reviews or in the first paid. place yeah uh one person says it's the best product they've ever bought uh so you know a person bought that that review and then there's a the exact opposite review that says this is the worst product i've ever had so you're kind of left wondering what to do yeah. anyways unless you have a personal recommendation so maybe something like this could help with that as well i think reviews are kind of done at this point it, it helps with the review problem right because no one who had a good experience with the product or like a fine experience, like a three star experience is going to go back and click three stars. It was okay. You're yeah, either you going to, you if only they're get the genuine, extremes. Yeah. If they're genuine, you might have someone come back and review it five stars. You probably won't. If they're yeah. terrible, you probably, you're more likely to get one. So have yeah. you ever written a review? Just we're totally off topic now, but have you ever submitted a review? Not for something I've bought on an online shop. No, I, yeah. I, the only time I've ever really done that is for, uh, rideshare apps, rideshare, basically. Oh yeah. They you're... prompt you. They, they basically yeah. put it right in your face. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I've never written a review. Of, yeah. No, it, it's bi-directional on those apps on this. You're, you're just, if you want to, you can go and leave one. You don't even have to have bought the product, right? Can you just go and write one or, yeah. or do you have I, to have bought it? I don't know. I think, I think. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I would assume that there's probably you'd think there's some sort of verification process. I don't know. I don't know. You know what? The other thing that struck me about this is I only half joke that you know half of my laptop is uh, the storage on my laptop. Half of it's used for different video conferencing tools. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> every time I'm I'm doing something, it's a, a different tool. To me, and, and again. I don't know, maybe I'm oversimplifying it, but but how many AI assistants are you going to end up with at right. some point, right? You know, because you can imagine now any other e-commerce site out there is like, oh man, we need our own AI referenced uh, tool now. So are you going to end up with, how many AI tools are you going to end up with? I guess every site's going to have their own AI. I, I guess so you, you? Could have a, you could end up in a world where every application, like you have an AI assistant for every task you do right or specific tasks so yeah like yeah maybe that's maybe the, yeah whole your your own personal ai staff to to help you get through yeah. your day and and uh get your tasks done until someone gets good enough or makes one that's good enough to do it all right yeah which i, if that I don't know happened. yeah i don't know if i would assume that you're kind of end, gonna end up in a situation where you've got sort of uh well very similar to what we were talking about in the models right you'll have you'll have an AI assistant that's really good at X. So that becomes your yep. sort of go-to tool for that. And then you've got some other thing and you go and use a different assistant for that. Maybe. I yeah. don't know. But you can have, you can have like a one interaction point with like a subset of expert systems for various tasks. Right. Yeah. So you could have like one endpoint and then it splits off into like spreadsheets or emailing or that kind of things like that. I think it's going to be really interesting to see how all this plays out. Like I know it's, it's oh, yeah. literally like, to use a phrase from Amazon, this is like day one. It's it's going to be interesting yeah. to see how this all pans out and all the interesting options we're going to have over the next probably even twelve months, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna happen quickly. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, very cool. Um, so those are the those are the news articles that I kind of stumbled across this week. And I thought we would uh, change up the last two tabs here, and again the the uh every week we tend to talk about this quite a lot i literally found this as i was getting ready uh for the call i don't know what i was doing i think i actually clicked on a link to grab one of the articles and this popped up so we've got a okay. aws generative ai week 2024 one hour virtual sessions from uh it starts on february 12th goes to the 16th from 1 to 2 p.m eastern time and you can uh, sign up for this now and there is, it looks like a, a pretty decent agenda, especially because it's so early days, just getting in and, and learning about this stuff now so that you can have, uh, 
I'll call it an informed opinion is kind of the way that I'm trying to tackle this problem right now. Um, I yeah. thought I'd share this because there's probably a good learning opportunity here to, if you're interested in figuring out more about this stuff. For sure. It looks pretty compelling. I'm probably going to sign up. Yeah, I, I'm going cool. to. I uh, I ran out of time. I was actually, because um, we're talking about AI assistance, I was actually having a conversation with ChatGPT right before this. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm working away. <laughs> I'm like, click, click, click. I'm, you know, trying to re and try to figure out the right way to ask a question for something. And the <laughs> yep. echo popped up and said, you got to be somewhere. And I was like, oops, or I would have registered for this, but it goes along <laughs> kind of nicely with what we just talked about, right? Picking the right foundation model, um, you know, getting data ready for Gen AI, uh, some good info here. Yeah. yeah. And we'll wrap up with a, a shameless self-promotion. Uh, next week, is it next week? The 15th, February 15th, which is two weeks, two weeks. Uh, we're going to do an introduction to identity and access management. I mentioned sort of in passing as we started this, that uh, we spend a lot of our time reviewing AWS accounts for customers. And I would, I don't know if you agree with this. I would say that uh, nine times out of 10, the biggest challenge that we see is just uh, overlooked configuration choices in IAM. So I thought, uh, we could uh, fire up a, a webinar. No need to register. We're going to do it in LinkedIn and Twitch like normal. So a couple weeks out, we'll do that. Yeah. Oh, and I have one more shameless self-plug oh, as we wrap up. Uh, one. We're also going to bring back, uh, now that we're through January, I got to get back into the, the Tuesday night thing on Twitch. So uh, oh, great. along with this theme, we talked about it, I think last week we talked about this, that... Um, I'm going to try, is it called Q business or business Q? So there's the, yep. the Amazon Q thing and I've been doing some reading about it and we can create a Q application and stuff like that. So there's no cloud formation as far as I can tell for it yet, but uh, okay. Bottle's been updated. So we've got API calls oh. that we can make and everything. And I think on Tuesday, I'm going to take a run at going through and creating a, a Q business application. Okay. I don't know what the heck it will well, do, exciting. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it kind of goes along with how many AI assistants are you going to have? Well, let's create one. It'll I don't, do. I don't know what it'll do, uh, but we'll business start that. Uh, yeah, it'll do, it'll do business things. We can make a movie recommendation, uh, uh, hey, business we application. Go. We can ask it for <laughs> what, what should, what is the best uh, Nicolas Cage movie that we should watch this Friday? Yeah. Um, <laughs> So I'll do that uh, starting Tuesday, 7 p.m. We'll get that going again. So uh, the 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 extended break over, over January is done. We'll get back into the groove of, of writing some code, maybe well, maybe poorly, uh, <laughs> on Tuesday nights. Excellent. And I see Kevin here. Hey, Kevin, how are you? Welcome to the show. Hey, Kevin. Um, anything else that you were thinking about uh, that you wanted to, to mention? Or is that the show for the uh -huh. week? I think that's the show for the week. All right. Perfect. Well, uh, thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, pretty much this is turning into a Gen AI uh, conversation <laughs> every Friday now, it seems. Really? And uh, <laughs> we will see you back next Friday. Uh, hopefully we'll see you before uh, then, maybe on Tuesday night, but uh, we'll see you on Friday and we'll talk about more AWS news for the week. So enjoy your weekends and uh, bye for now.